People deluded. A quick vid. I'm not going to be here long. Probably I'm going to be here long, but I want to go and eat my breakfast. But um, I've tried to air this, but I felt it's a kind of a quiet news ground. Obviously, we've beaten Man United and we've turned over the Rens result for at least at least until April. We can stay away from the banter or negative performances. It's all good, but not much has been happening. But if you see Monkey, Monchi, however you want to pronounce his name, Spaniard, soon to be ex-director of football of Roma. In fact, he technically is. I'm completely forgetting that the whole announcement that he's departing the club. He looks to be returning to Seville. Now, I've got so much to say, but I'll start with this. This is another example of when you see the language of Arsenal, and I quote, very confident, them two words, very confident, be alarmed. I saw that them same two words time ago when we was talking about Aaron Ramsey's contract, um, to be fair, Meza Ozil's contract, Alexis Sanchez's contract, several players, several things. Very confident. You lot know as Arsenal fans, very confident. It's scary. And it was shown again. Apparently, we, we've chased him. We, we've we been known we've chased him. We tried to get him allegedly before he even went to Roma. We've tried to get him after it. We've tried to re reunite him with Uno Emre and, and use that sort of model thing, whether you want it or not, because it is worth remembering. Obviously, on one hand, I'd be for it because you see him sourcing the targets and things like that, especially at Seville and how they got success. But if you look at it on the other hand of how Arsenal want to be self-financing and not really want to compete as a club, at least that's what we see from Kroenke. You can see how the likes of, if we was to have Rakitic, Dani Alves, Keitar and all of these good players, how many of them stayed for a very long time at Seville, or the successes that they all went on to and being moved for profit and sold on at other clubs, they achieved success. But what happened to Seville beyond the Europa League, if you was to look at the league positions? So it depends how you look at it. Um, for me personally, I just want someone who's competent within the role. We know sim a lot of clubs now, probably Man United with, with Ole Gole Solskjaer and it was going that way with Jose. I wouldn't say Klopp, but I'd say Klopp. Poch definitely won and Uno Emery definitely won. Head coaches, we've gone into that model now. Long gone are the days of Salis Ferguson and Wenger where they're anything. You'd actually say both of them, lastly, are football managers. We know they're football managers and they week in, week out, they're training the teams. But that's arguably the last thing they are. For Wenger and them, man, they were financial planners and all the other things they had to do. Now it's a head coach thing. Um, so just to give, we know it's a big turnaround for Uno Emre with regardless of what you think of some of these players, some need to be brought in, some need to be moved on, some need to be given new contracts, some need to be cut loose. There's a difficult task. So if they give, bring someone in that could help him, just away from what I might feel, my personal opinions on Monkey, someone that's competent at their little director of football sourcing target sort of thing with the manager that can just deal with on the field antics and then you've got Raul Sanye who dots the I's crosses the T's along with all the other innovative innovative folk at the club you could see how we could get things rolling because one thing that I like about Ivan Gazidis and Wenger going is that you can't hide nobody can hide behind Wenger being here for 20 years and not adapting to change or Ivan Gazidis his false promises or even Stan Kroenke you've never seen him everybody has to earn their keep so if it was a thing where we was going to reunite the two Spaniards with Raul Sanye, three countrymen doing their thing, it was all cool. Allegedly, he's going back to Seville, though. Um, there's a lot of reports and a lot of things, probably a lot of journalists fabricating a lot of stuff, but allegedly he was set. He wanted to come to Arsenal. He's been set on it for a while. It's, um, if, if you listen to Balaguer and them and there and Ornstein, allegedly it was as good as a done deal when he left Roma. But when the call from Seville, his former club, is a club he's got a lot of admiration for, came call and he couldn't reject it, and he's got and it looks to be done. Allegedly, a report or official confirmation will come out tomorrow, so on Monday. Again, I'm not a journalist. I'm just going upon what these guys are, re are read reading and and writing. But allegedly, that's it. John Cross has said we offered him two point five million pounds contract um for three years um a year contract um, for three years. He's we just have to assume he's rejected that. Now, his, Rome, his, his, his work at Seville is praised and rightly so, but if he was to go and look at the Roma stuff, it is a bit under scrutiny because obviously Malcolm is not doing no bits for Barcelona at all, but they more or less got the Malcolm one done and then he went. Obviously, Barcelona can turn anyone's head, but you look at, there's a lot of scrutiny for signings like Nzonzi and there's a couple more scrutiny. There's a lot of scrutiny for other signings as well. I'm not sure if he was actually involved in the Zanolio deal to bring him from Inter Milan to Roma, but there's a lot of scrutiny around what he's been doing at Roma and his relationship with the with the um, the fans and stuff. He's been getting into altercations, allegedly, or verbal altercations. So, yeah, it was... It was gonna. It was gonna be an end. Um, a telling report allegedly, which I saw and I thought it would be telling, is that allegedly he wasn't even involved in bringing Ranieri as the manager to the club. Now, 
whether he believes in Ranieri or you believe in Ranieri or not, you've got to look at it le um, le logically, people. If he's in that sort of certain position at Roma, they're bringing in a new manager and he is not consulted or has any thoughts or, or say in regards to the process to bring in the manager, because I don't want to say managers are not important, but they're more or less, these men are more ahead, ahead of the manager and he wasn't consulted f with so. You can see how it's the beginning of the end. Um, so yeah, it looks like we've missed. It looks like we've missed out on him, and apparently he was the number one target for Arsenal. He was the one, and it and um, I wouldn't go overboard and say it's, it's panic stations and things because it is what it is. I mean, he's technically not here now. We're still going as a football club. We're not. We're not default. We've not defaulted as a football club. We're still going to be default. We're still going to be going and not defaulting whether someone else comes in or whether he or, or whether he has a U turn, another U turn, and comes to the club. So it's not that deep. Of course, for me, it's the main thing is Unai Emery needs help. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the targets that Arsenal have been looking at or necessarily agree with everything Unai Emery has been doing, but he's got a 100 things to do. I would love Unai Emery or whoever's the manager to be in a position where they say, I need a centre-half, um, here's my personal target, similar to Poch because he spoke about it, here's my targets, my five targets. Like, let's say this, I've given you five centre-half targets I would like, um, um, these are the guys I would like to go for. Can you go out and get them? Now, if they go out and so if he identifies the target and they go out and do it, then cool. But what I'd like for, to happen if it can't happen in Arsenal's case is, no, Uno Uno Emre, we don't have the money for him or his statistics might not be the best, but here are some alternatives. Look at them or let's collab the five you have with the... F with the five that the scouting report, scouting team have built up reports for and then from them 10 targets we saw sort of thing. Kind of like... The way I got it when I saw um, Pochettino describe it in one newspaper, I think it was a French newspaper, the way, the best way is like, you know when you're a little kid and you, you just write down bare stuff out the Argos catalogue for Christmas, just bare things, you know you're not going to get bare, but it's just a hit and hope, you hope you get one, two of them, that's the sort of vibe. So I'd just like Uno Emre to be able to be helped because that's what it is now, That that is what it is. The head coach, obviously he has targets, he suggests targets, but he does everything else, he does everything but bring in players and I would like... I've always felt our scouting is behind for as much as you say, I do think our scouting has been behind because we've gone to France and not really found anyone in a day and age where there's Ndombele, fair enough, we tried to get him, Thomas Lamar, Kante, many different players. You go back to 2004 and them age, just before that, we were the ones for France. Um, so it's more competitive. So with that, our scouting not being the best, or for me, which I actually believe is scouting has never been a problem with Arsenal. We can identify good players. It's just getting the deals over the line because, as you know, if Arsenal are looking in, I don't know, if Arsenal go, if I go into Boardwater Farm and look at a player, for example, as an Arsenal scout at any level, Chelsea, Spurs are all going to come and have a look just because I'm looking and we're going to go and do the same. That's what scouting is nowadays. So it's about getting deals done, getting them over the line. Um... If we can go and do that, bring in men that can source targets, bring in targets and get ultimately get the deals done so that Uno Emery can have these players in as quick as possible if Uno Emery is not here, another manager, um, and 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 use them and, and integrate them sort of thing. That's that's what we need. So I hope there's another target. You hear Overmars, you hear, to be fair, I, I ain't heard another name apart from Overmars in a minute. But, um, but yeah, man, and for me, surely... I know, I know Miss Lintat wanted the technical director role or whatever you call it, um, but surely there's a, there's still a position in regards to chief scouting or, don't get me caught on the names, or, or head of operations or, I'm going to say chief scout, but not necessarily that. Surely there's a position still to be filled in regards to the man who is in, responsible or in charge of the scouting or what he says goes sort of thing. Because if uh, Miss Lintat, that was his thing. He's left now. Um... I can't, I've done so many reports, I don't even remember if someone else is coming, but if no one else come in, there's that, there's, there's, there's someone not there, there's, there's, a, there's a gap. Obviously, it's fine going after the director of football and stuff, but where's the scouting target? Now, obviously, the roles interchange because Monkey's director of football, whatever he was, technical director, but he's, he's more or less scouting. You've heard him talk about scouting and the detailed reports in regards to scouting, so it doesn't necessarily need to be filled, but something tells me there's two additions going to come into this club, but... Yeah, man, hopefully there's other targets. You hear over Mars a lot. In fact, I'll probably do a vid separately about him, to be fair with you. Um, but yeah, man, like it's, the monkey to Arsenal thing deal is dead at least for now, but it is what it is. On that note, though, I've spent nine minutes too long here, people, so I'm going to keep it moving. People, deluded, comment, subscribe, and do the rest if you wish. I'm out, though.